usage, use, utility. I mean, um, put to any use, it can virtually come and bear on any discussion of any kind, long drawn out or short. Um, which, which makes me wonder about um, what kind of image culture we are talking about at the moment. It's just, uh, you know, again, uh, questions of readability um, uh, across the Well, what, what you say makes me think of uh, a remarkable opening sequence of uh, uh, Anand Patwadan documentary where he's quizzing a Rajasthani woman. आपको नहीं लगता है कि नकली बनाए हैं? नहीं, नकली नहीं है। उसी की जो सत्ती हुई है ना उसी की सूरत है। देखिए इसको फोटो को अच्छी तरह देखिए, हम्म? और जो दोनों फोटो को जोड़ के बनाए हैं। जोड़ के नहीं बना सकते। भगवान सिर्फ उसी को दिखता है ना औरों को तो नहीं दिखता। तो ये बताइए कि सामने से किरण फेंकते हैं तो एक फोटो खींचते हैं ना तो किरण में आएगा जरूर इसलिए तो फिर पता चलेगा भाई भगवान है मैं तो ऐसा पता कैसे चलेगा कि भगवान है। An image which is um, a kind of photographic montage with clearly non-photographic elements of of Rup Kumar, yeah. recent Sati. So I think this was uh, 87 the Sati occurred. Um, and um, you, uh, the, the, Kajri Jain has a great account of this in her book, uh, Gods in the Bazaar. Um, mm -hmm. And so you hear the, the documentary maker off camera interrogating her about this image. And he's trying to point out that this is, this is not, um, not a plausible photograph or not a credible photograph, that there's um, mm -hmm. fakery is involved. And, um, uh, so the, the, the sequence wonderfully stages exactly this kind of incommensurability that you're, um, you're pointing to, um, two different image regimes. So uh, Pat Wadden on the one hand invested in the indexical claims of photography and um, rejecting anything that disrupts that uh, regime. Uh, the Rajasthani woman uh, believing that what she has is a photo, as in... Uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, chromolithographs being referred to as photos of the gods. Yeah. Um, right. So, so there's an irresolvability and incommensurability about this um, this standoff. I just wanted to also then ask you about what uh, you think of sort of digitally enhanced images and videos and the mm. proliferation of how the moment of photography and that edit is not so separate anymore, right? Like mm -hmm. you now shoot with the filter on or you shoot with certain effects on or so then is that still in in the realm of indexical photography or does that step out as a constructed image or yeah well i think on the one hand one has to acknowledge that um, the the distinction between analog and digital i mean the, the, there's always been a blurring of that. So mm -hmm. uh, one thinks of um, montage techniques, over painting. Um, uh, so analog has always had an element of creative intervention in it. Yeah. Um, and in a symmetrical way, then I think one would have to say that um, the digital image is also in part remains an index of photons. Um, so this is an argument made by Jan Sepinan in a very interesting article about images transmitted by the Mars rover, you know, which would appear to be the kind of ultimately distantiated digital forms, um, but which, which could be said to remain indexical. Um, so I think one needs a nuanced argument rather than uh, an argument that stresses an absolute separation and an absolute mm -hmm. difference. But I also think we're probably on the cusp of, of, of a new revolution in which deep fakes and, and you know, new software, what I believe is called generative adversarial networks, you know, will make possible uh, imagery uh, still and moving that will be very hard to detect um, in terms of its evidential qualities or be 
forensically difficult to diagnose what its status is. Um, mm -hmm. And I think then we'll really be in trouble politically. Mm -hmm. And I think that, you know, anthropologically studying photography allows one to be a kind of perpetual realist because, you know, what, whatever the nature of the images you're looking at, collecting, uh, they're always evidence of something. Um, so they, they become social facts, they become um, objectified in a particular way that makes them, um, uh, at least for my purposes, inviolable. Um, so I think that perhaps that's one way in which, um, you know, anthropology provides a kind of realist alibi. Mm -hmm. um, the, the image is always evidence of something. Mm -hmm. So Anisha, mm -hmm. it sounds as though you have uh, a lot to contribute to the debate. I'm eager to hear more of your thoughts. I've been thinking uh, about photography and especially in the digital, in various aspects and, and also uh, sort of trying to look at what post-digital photography would mean. And uh, of late also, I've been thinking about the stock image and that's something I wanted to hear your mm -hmm. sort of take on and like, and with the idea of the pro filmic that you uh, talk about, and I'm wondering if there's some relation. Yeah, no, I, I think stock imagery is, um, is an intriguing, um, an intriguing object. I think um, we, we, we could say it represents the triumph of iconography over the event. And think, thinking about your question, I was contemplating um, manuruts and also um, a, a practice of Nepali pilgrimage photography. So it strikes me that uh, manuruts, this sort of um, painted and photographic tradition depicting devotees either side of uh, the Sri Nathji um, uh, Murti in Nathdwara is, is one way of trying to manage um, contingency. So the stress on symmetry, on um, frontality, on the hieratic is a way of turning the potential chaos and contingency of the event into a a recurrent template. So mm. it's about turning the um, instantaneity of the photographic event into the eternity of mm. the sacred, I think. Um, and I think something very similar happens in a place that I've spent quite a lot of time in recently called Dakshin Kali, which is a, a, a Kali shrine um, a couple of hours south of um, Kathmandu mm -hmm. um, and there there are just in the last five years or so um, I think 20 I did count them once I now forget exactly how many there are they're either 20 or 40 I forget um, bamboo shacks essentially which also function as photo studios uh, and who all produce pretty much identical images. So there's this kind of convenient um, arrangement or fiction between the priest of the shrine and the photo studios whereby mm -hmm. photography as of about five years ago is no longer allowed in front of the shrine. Mm -hmm. And so devotees on the way to the shrine get themselves photographed by these studios and they're then photoshopped against um, a photoshop mm -hmm. background of the shrine. And what results is mm -hmm. essentially near identical images. So when you go, part of the Dutch and Kali experience is you, you, know, you go by bus up into the hills, uh, you then get your photo done, you sacrifice a chicken and you pick up your photo on the way back. Everyone comes away with this kind of same sacred experience, the same sacred memento, the same sacred image. And I think one way of understanding that is about um, a shift in temporal dimension from the contingency and chaos of the, the photographic event into this sacred space of a completely controlled iconography uh, of, of the experience. And I think stock imagery is, is a kind of different way of doing that. Um, it, it eliminates, you know, randomness. It eliminates 
accident it, it stage manages the event in the name of something else i mean one, one, yeah sorry one of the things i i, I wanted to mention here as, as you brought it up was what i was trying to get at was also the kind of evidentiary potential of memory as, as you just indicated mm. memory that is not necessarily amenable to calibration uh, constant calibration or verification but something that lies a very delicate empiricism um, empiricism is for me uh, more and more through the works of artists something that is not to be taken as solid ground but is to be taken as a very fine line uh, more and more uh, especially in, in today's world and I find that this fragility is something that can be you know addressed a little more at our point at, at this point of time because of the sheer surfeit but also because of how images are taking positions uh, in you know today so yeah um, I guess that fundamentally might change our equation with, with spaces. And I think that's what's happening with photography now. There's a fundamental paradigmatic shift. And I guess uh, this moment in which all of us might feel isolated, engaged, and in many instances, happy to be disengaged because it allows one to focus also then on what really matters uh, and where one would like to focus amidst the noise. Um, for me has been about discovering all kinds of uh, you know tenuous relationships uh, ones that don't hold up to time ones that don't give a sense of permanence and if they do uh, one has to read them yet again only to realize that they've been placed there uh, for a reason 